Hey guys, so now it's time for us to assemble your 3D model from the pictures you took, okay? Uh, for this we're going to use Regard 3D. We had some attempts of doing this in class with me showing some of you how to do step by step, but I felt that it took a lot of time and even though not all of you could follow me. So I want to try something new today with you. I will record me doing this and I will you see this video on YouTube, okay? So you can have this video on your, on your computer together with Regard 3D. So you can do step by step with me with this video and you can pause and find yourself and let's see if doing this you find it easier to follow me, all right? So, first step we need is to take our pictures. You did it? Great! Now you need to put your pictures on the computer. Maybe because of any reason you couldn't take pictures. So, I'll show you this option that should take some model pictures from Regard 3D's website, okay? Now, I'll put my screen, my computer screen here and I'll show you step by step. Let's go! Hey guys, so at this point you probably noticed that this video is longer than our class, okay? Don't worry about it. I'll give you some options uh, about some paths for you to follow during this class. So we're going to think about it, make our choices, and some text will appear across the video saying like, oh, if you're doing this way, you can skip ahead to time, -na -na, okay? So to this time, to that time. Uh, or if you don't need to know this, if you already know how to do this, you can skip to that time. Okay, so pay attention to these messages while you are doing. Focus on one idea to finishing this class and after you have done it, after you have finished converting your pictures into a 3D model, maybe you can go back and see the parts you missed it and try to do it again. Alright? Let's continue. So, this is my computer and first of all, we need to get your pictures. In case you don't have any, let's go to the internet and look for Regard 3D. That's the name of the software you're using. So you can go to the software's website. And right here you have documentation and tutorial. Okay. Now an option for you to do this is to go reading this tutorial and you see every screen you're going to see step by step how to do it. Okay? Now, on this tutorial, going back up, so I'm here, documentation tutorial, you see this part, find test data, okay? You can download these models from here, all right? Uh, you have data sets, you have models built, okay? So, I like this model here, the CO Castle, okay? So click it, it will open the, the website SourceForge and in 5 seconds you have your pictures downloaded. All right? Now these example pictures are really nice because they are certain to work with regard 3D. Okay? From, there, from them you're going to create a beautiful model, a beautiful 3D model. So you have downloaded your pictures. In my case, they appear right here. In Safari, you can also see them right here. If you're using Google Chrome, you probably will see it around here. Okay? What you want to do is to double click this zip folder you downloaded. There it is. So, you open the zip folder into another folder, CO Castle, right here. So, if you enter this folder, you're going to see some pictures 
in some text files, okay, with instructions. What you need to do is to know where are these pictures. So let me copy them. I'm selecting the first, holding shift, clicking the last one, command C to copy. And let's go to the desktop. Okay. And I will create a folder here for me to organize my pictures. So, how do I create a folder? I can try to control click and you see new folder. And let's call it the castle. Very good. Enter here, command V. Let's paste these pictures here. Okay. Uh, what you're seeing here is my computer trying to synchronize it with iCloud. I don't have plenty of space, no problem, okay? This won't make a difference for us now. So, that's one way to do it, to get pictures from the model, right? Now, let's suppose you have your pictures, okay? You have taken your pictures, I don't know, from the iPad, from your cell phone, so what I suggest you to do is to upload your pictures to a cloud, okay? So, examples of cloud you have. Let me show you. You have uh, Google Drive. Okay. So, let's suppose you have Google Drive installed on your, uh, your iPad. You can search for it here. You can enter Google Drive from the computer and see your files there. Okay. You have OneDrive. Okay. And you also can enter OneDrive from here. Now, uh, you have Dropbox, it's the same thing. You have an app on the iPad or on the cell phone. You can send your pictures to there. You've entered this cloud here, so you can download the pictures from there, all right? Let me show you how I would download my pictures. I would download my pictures from OneDrive. Now, I use the screws OneDrive. So, my way to access is to go to portal.microsoftonline.com gonna load. It's going to enter the OFFS portal and here we have Google Drive. I have already logged in, okay? So maybe it's going to ask for your email and password. But after you do it, you see the screen or something like that if you're using another cloud. In my pictures are right here, Pueri. Coding three. Coding here. And this technique we are trying is called photogrammetry. Okay, so I create this folder here with these pictures. What I will do is to download the whole folder. So go back, I will select the folder. You can do quite the same in any other cloud, okay? You can select the folder and download it. Now it's really important for you to have in mind to keep your things organized. You must know where these pictures are, okay? So that's it, download. You can follow progress here, okay, and when it's done, you're going to have a pop-up telling you it's done, like it just did here, okay, so again, I'll double click, it's going to open up a f new folder, I will copy this folder, so I'm pressing command C, uh, a tip for you guys, 
if you, in case you don't know if you're really copying something, take a look here. When you press Command C, you see the edit blinking. All right, and I'll go to desktop. You can see my old castle folder there. I will press Command V. Now I also have this folder here. Okay. I'll show you first how to apply the photogrammetry to my own pictures. Okay. Because there will be an issue that I want to share with you guys. And I will show you how you solve it. So, first of all, let's take a look at these pictures. Uh, first, you'll see all of them. I'm selecting all of them. Okay, so remember, how do I select all? I can click the first. I can go to the last one, hold shift, and click. Select all of them. Okay. Another way to do it is to press Command A. Okay, select all of them. I double click one of them and I can open all of them at once. And by doing this, I'll have the pictures organized here on the left. Okay. Okay, I don't have storage on the iCloud, no problem. And you can take a look of my pictures. So again, what's important about these pictures? They are 360 degrees around the object in different angles, okay? So you see I have one set of pictures more from above, another one more from the front, okay? So let's see what happens. And all these were taken with my iPad, right? So, and from the iPad I uploaded to, to OneDrive, okay? That's done. Right, so after I have the pictures on the computer, after I know where these pictures are on the computer, I don't need these anymore. Okay, you can just close it. And now let's open Regard 3D. Where it is? So probably you can find it in the launch pad on your computer if it's not right here on the dock. Okay. So that's Regard 3D. That's this, these small red squares. Okay. You open it. Let me maximize. It doesn't really look that good, right? Yeah. A little bit weird. Anyway, we're going to click on this button. Okay. We're going to. Put our pictures, he our pictures here, and put the software to work. So you click here. You must have a project name. So in my case, I'll call it computer. Okay. Where do I want this project? I don't want it here in documents. And show you where it is. So. I want to put everything on the desktop. Okay, it's going to be fine here on the desktop. Uh, in our computer, you don't need to change it. Okay, you can use the default path. All right. After you create the project, you can see Add Picture Set. So you open it here. We're going to go here, add files. Click there. And now it's the part where you must find the pictures you want to upload here. So let me use these pictures here. Again, it's like all of them. Maybe here you might have a problem, okay? Let me show you something. Maybe you are seeing these pictures as icons. Okay. When you see pictures as icons, you cannot do the shift trick. Okay, this doesn't work. You can do command the A, it doesn't work either. So you need to come here 
and be sure you are seeing list right guys and on the list view you can click the first hold the shift click the last or just press command A and open these pictures now something really interesting here it's going to tell where the picture came from what's the image size who's the producer of your camera what's the camera model right so all of this information uh, is data that's inserted in the pictures and the software analyzes it for you and then you're going to have the focal length right that's an important information another important information which is the sensor width right in this case this shows an A now it must be a number here okay for, for it to work you can hit OK and get this error message why does this happen? well this happens because that information here is taken from a database installed on the installed, installed with regard 3D okay and you need to access that database and change the information you need to put the information to be sure your project is going to run nice and easy okay uh, so what you need to do in case you have that NA first of all you can close it right you can close regard 3D you're not using until you fix that mis mistake maybe you could say but not actually uh, a really mistake it's just a missing information now you go to finder okay you go to finder you go to applications because regard to is on applications maybe you need to scroll down to see where it is but here it is when you find regard 3D, hold Ctrl on your keyboard and click it. You want to see the package contents. Alright? So you are seeing what is installed inside there. Alright? Uh, for those of you who ask me about hacking or what are the, the power abilities in coding, so these tricks, these something like hacking okay so I'm going inside the folder and doing some modifications right it's not illegal hacking it's not entering other person's computer okay but it's changing something okay basically that's hacking uh, so I entered contents now we enter resources and here you have the sensor database.csv now csv is uh, a file of a type of list okay and what you wanna do is to hold control here open with text edit why we are opening it with text edit why we're not just double clicking because it would open with numbers or it would open with Microsoft Excel and these softwares can modify a little bit the program so just open with text edit alright now what you see here is a list of models of camera semicolon sorry brands of camera semicolon models semicolon focal width okay so the last thing you see on the list is that number you need so what do we need? we need to look for Apple and see if there is an iPad 6th generation written like this and this is important 
over that list. So let me put these to the side. Okay, let's open text edit. Let's take a look. Scrolling down, let's go to Apple. There's an Apple iPad with a number. But the problem is, it should be iPad 6th generation, right? This iPad is just a random iPad. So what you can do, you can edit this list from here. You can type enter and be sure uh, on what you're writing. Okay, be careful here, because you need to respect the capitalization. So capital A, B P L E. Pay attention, there's no space here, so we're going to write iPad with capital P. Now we're going to write the same way it is over here. Space sixth generation. Close parenthesis semicolon. Now you need to put information for this sensor width. It can be the same sensor width as this default iPad here. So now you can just type 6.16. Okay? So you just entered information there about this iPad. Done. You can go to file and save this. Right? Command S would save also. So now I can close it. Now I can close it. So I need to restart the software. Okay, for this modifications to be applied, I need to restart Regard 3D. So let's go again, Regard 3D. I already have a project, so let's go to that project. Projects on desktop, it's called computer. It's here. Now I can add picture set. Let me bring this back to here. Add files. Desktop. Photogrammetry. Click the first. Scroll, hold shift, click the last. And chada here's the information that we were missing. Right? This thing is optional, but I like to do it anyway. What's the name for this set of pictures? I repeat the name computer. And I'll hit OK. Now, no error message. That's good. That's really good. And here are my two failed attempts, and I have this one that was correct. And with new options here for me to click. What I want to do is to compute the matches. Leave the computer do this work, okay? So, this new set of options. Uh, configuration settings will appear. For now, let's just use everything as it is. Okay, let's not interfere. Uh, maybe after you have run all this process once, you can go back and redo the steps and see, oh, what happens if I change here? What happens if I change here? And you can try to improve your model, right? So these are options for to improve your model later. Just hit OK for now. And now prepare yourself to let your computer work. Okay? Reduce um, that have lifting work, to get your pictures, to analyze them from different angles and see what are the matches. Okay? Uh, what is there on one picture? that looks like what is there on the other picture. All right? For now, guys, let's just wait a moment. Oh, we'll skip these waiting parts for you. And there will be some. So, 
for doing this when it's processing then you can talk then you can check your iPads you can ask me questions but leave your computer running alright okay so here we go uh, when it's done it's going to show you this message total lapse time you can move this round there's still nothing much to see just hit OK but here you see a new option popped up matches with new options for to click over here now you wanna go to triangulation alright so it has an information map inside the computers uh, CPU and GPU okay so the CPU is the core processor unit okay and the GPU is the graphics processor unit this information is stored there as data right nothing much for it to see now this triangulation will calculate where the cameras were positioned and where are these common data from one picture to another okay so again you click there new options appear for you just hit OK for now okay new calculations you start okay everything your computer is doing is math right uh, software engineers use a lot of math to analyze these pictures to create this composition okay uh, a curiosity why we wait is that the the field of software engineering that work with image software image and video software use a lot of data a lot of scientific data that comes from the research students on how humans see okay how the human eye works and from those studies we can produce better cameras and better softwares to analyze images all right now it's done we click ok we can already start seeing something now do you remember my picture it was my computer screen I'm just clicking and dragging uh, with the table around so for now it seems that I have a picture here I pass two fingers my trackpad to download it I can click with two fingers and drag and it resembles something on my screen here so you can imagine the dock of my computer here you can imagine the background here still not too much oh, not much okay so this is called the sparse point cloud you see points they are sparse they have a lot of space among them Let's create the dance point cloud. Click there. Again, more options for each one of these steps. You receive more and more options. So again, if you're not satisfied with your final result, you can redo these steps and see what happens if you change them. It's our first trial. Let's just click OK. And let's wait some more. OK so what's the difference from the sparse point cloud to the dense point cloud the sparse point cloud are the more obvious points that are similar from one picture to the other the dense point cloud will try to fill out the gaps what is there in between these points okay so we'll go back to the pictures take a look do some calculations check the colors okay try to match the colors to see what is there in between all right now again this step can take a while great so the dense point clouds done we start seeing more things here let me click and drag nice now we can see what really looks like a computer there right maybe pieces of the table and see how nice is the plug of the computer 
let's zoom in. Oh, sorry, too much. So, uh, interesting facts, okay? The computer's screen had a lot of colors and it created a texture effect to it. It is self illuminated. So, remember when you talked about good light quality? The, the screen is perfect, right? Because it has even light all across it. Now, this cable is white, it is three dimensional, it casts a shadow, so it's also a good thing to be mapped. Okay, and you can see the other part going over here. The keyboard, where are the keys? You can see roughly the keys shape. Let me drag it to here. All right, you can see the keys shape. Let's move it a little bit backwards. So, they have a relief, okay? So it means that there are high points, there are, are lower points. So you can see them clearly here. The trackpad area, though, is just gray, pure gray. It's a laminum, it's reflexive, so you don't see it much here. And if we just turn around and see, so remember the back, the back was really shadowed, okay, because there was the shadow of the computer, so what we see instead is just the screen again, okay, so it tried to figure out what was there in the back of the computer, there was too much shadow, it doesn't know, but it knows what there is in the front, so it just transpose that information to the back. Okay? So this is the dense point cloud that's not a surface yet. Can go way inside so you see just little dots, just some points with some color information that when we make them close together they resemble an image but they are not an image yet. But here we have a new level of this path we are threading and we have new options here and here we can create surface let's do it again more and more options just stick with what you got and hit OK now uh, from those dots from those points you have seen this software will make connections with lines between one point and the other for all the points you have seen there. Okay? We're going to connect with traces with little lines and again we will calculate the colors for those lines. From those lines it will try to fill out the gaps between lines with surface information and here is the funny part okay here is what we get from this process right so apparently it felt there was something here maybe because of the shadows uh, remember the part where we couldn't see quite proper here it is it gets this relief right it's weird. The cable goes all the way here. It didn't understand, sorry, didn't understand well what there was in the background. Let's see. It was really shadowy here. So it's dark over here. Okay, right? It knows it's dark. But again, if you try to see it closer, you see that it understands that there is the screen of the computer basically. Okay, so there you go, there you are 3D model. Uh, it's interesting to appreciate these funny results we got here. Now I can try to explore more options around here. What you're seeing is the label lighting, the view. You can try to disable the lighting. Change a little bit the things. 
you can try to hide texture doesn't do much you can see just the lines okay now remember when I said to you it was calculating lines and their colors connecting the dots there it is and the highest resolution parts have more lines okay you see all these lines all these detailed lines with its colors and basically they are triangles okay uh, 3d images are basically made of triangles flat triangles viewed and connected in different angles okay you can see the points again so again you see the points over there or the lines connecting these points all right can you see lines connecting the points or you can see the feel all right uh, the shading you can put smooth or you can put flat and you have this interesting effect on flat you can see the actual triangles right and you can turn off the lighting texture doesn't do much you can try to change the dot size point size doesn't change much right so there it is there it is with the picture I got right so let's suppose you could have your own picture you use the picture from the model now I'll redo the steps showing the pictures from a model we downloaded alright so let's go from the beginning okay guys we are just restarting this so in case you didn't download any pictures in case you uh, didn't want to have the trouble fixing the missing information from the pictures you took or maybe you didn't have a good result with your own pictures let's use the model okay remember that model we downloaded so let's go regard 3d uh, this screen opened up because we were using it already let's close it let's start a new project start a new project over here naming uh, I have a folder called castle with the pictures I'll call this one castle 3d setting it on the desktop right and there it is desktop castle 3d okay add picture set add files my pictures are here in this file click on the first one and select all of them so click on the first click on the last one holding shift so select all of them again you can do this by selecting all of them by holding shift if they are displayed on a list let's suppose you are seeing them as icons these won't work or it would require you to click one by one so if that's your case come over here change list okay now click on the first hold shift click on the last click on open you're going to open these pictures here you see the file name with the location where they are image size here you can see the camera maker the company that made the camera that took the pictures okay this information is embedded in the pictures all right this is called also metadata all right camera model so again other information embedded in the pictures with focal length and sensor width now if you have seen the first part of this video with the pictures that I took the war there wasn't inform any information here okay 
uh, and we need to do a trade to insert information. These model pictures are nice because they have all the information you need. Alright, that's it. You hit OK. A new level of this tree will build up and you can click Compute Matches. This screen gives you a lot of options for you to personalize how you want your computer to act. Okay, since uh, we are not that familiar with this software, we are just trying to see how it works. First of all, for every building you are constructing over the 3D building, building in the sense of uh, things you're building in your computer, you know, you're creating here with your, from your pictures, just leave these things like this and hit OK. After you do all the process, after you go all the way in your senior model and say, oh, I'm not that satisfied, you can redo, retrace your steps and try to modify something here and see what happens. So, OK. Now it's going to compute the matches, right? Uh, I'm sorry if you have seen the first part of this video and I'm just repeating things. I'm repeating for those who were just ahead with the models so everybody can have the information. So what uh, computing, computing matches mean is that your computer is analyzing each picture, seeing the more preeminent features, more preeminent characteristics of each picture and comparing to each other to see that oh it has an idea that these pictures are from the same object already so the software works like this so it's trying to compare what is in there in common from one picture to the other okay uh, another piece of information maybe when you click there you're seeing your computer like this console output nothing is happening just click here and drag to the side all right then you'll be able to see what's going on here all right and after some time you see your some output here when this screen opens up just hit OK another level open here you still can see anything here, okay? So what happened? What w what was computing matches? What was this process? Uh, it was the process to generate data for your computer, for your CPU, for your GPU, to know what is there in common among these pictures, okay? It's not displaying yet. To display things to you, you need to triangulate. So let's go. From here, click on triangulation. New options will open. Again, you can adapt something here to you again. Let's not do it. Let's stick with the default. Stick to the default and click OK. So, it's going to get the invisible information it just calculated it will do some more math around it and it will place these points that there are in common among pictures in a spatial organization okay you can click OK when it's done and start seeing that some points that were found to be in common from one picture to the other start appearing here you can click and drag and see this result. You can scroll two fingers up to put these pictures away, these dots away, two fingers down your trackpad to bring them to you. There are not so many dots, okay? From far away you can have an idea of this castle. When you bring it up, you don't see much. So because there is a lot of space among dots, this is called the sparse point cloud. 
What you want to do is to fill up these gaps. Fill out these gaps. So, we're going to create a dense point cloud. More options about that. Okay. Why so many options? Because your computer is inserting information. Okay. It couldn't find that information it's creating. So it's asking you, oh, how accurate, how detailed you want this information to be. Okay. And you can have more dots to be created, less dots to be created. This will change the final result. This will change also the amount of time spent in this process. For now, just click OK. Now, all your computer is doing is math, right? It's getting those dots. It's using a lot of geometry to map them in space. Uh, geometry that you learn at school, right? Geometry that if you want to take a math course, you learn in college. And it's putting all this math, all this geometry into a software. So who programmed it needs to know a lot about geometry. Uh, another fun fact is that software engineers that develop these kinds of softwares, image softwares, uh, use a lot of research from the medicine and biology fields about the human eye. Yes, so there are scientists who study the human eye, how it works, how the brain works to produce the effect of vision, and these findings are translated into software features, are translated into camera settings, okay, Maybe not the camera, it's a, just a piece of the lens, uh, a piece of the software of the camera, a piece of hardware there. So we can take better pictures. We can take pictures that create images that are more, that are closer to what the human eye actually sees. All right. And since we see in 3D, what this particular software is doing is to use this information, this knowledge about how can our brain set images in three dimensions and it's doing this here in front of you, right? Uh, it takes a lot of work from the GPU especially, right? So if you have a computer with a very good GPU, uh, this means a very good video card, right? Maybe you have, if you have a gamer computer, you just love gamer computers because they have amazing video cards. There, these computers are going to help you if you're working with 3D design and this kind of software, okay? On the other hand, if you don't have a good GPU, if you don't have a good video card, this work will take longer and longer, right? It will demand a lot of work from your CPU, the core processing unit. And as a result, this will slow down your computer while it's doing this, right? Uh, what's the difference? Since we need to wait, let's talk about that. Uh, GPU has some components and structure in a way that it's dedicated to work with the geometry. All right, so it does a lot of calculations involving geometry, basically. Your CPU can do a lot of calculations involving geometry, but it also can do a lot of calculations involving all the other functions of the computer. And these calculations involving geometry are going to deal with a lot of points, a lot of surfaces, uh, points of view. So they're, although they are quite simple calculations, they are a very big in numbers of processes. Okay, so that's why uh, computers today have this GPU separated from the CPU, okay? 
uh, back in time didn't need a GPU, basically, okay? If you were talking about uh, computers from 15 years ago that used Microsoft DOS, you didn't have a graphical interface, so basically you could do everything with the CPU or a very simple GPU. Nowadays, you have all this process, all these possibilities, and it requires a lot of heavy work. So here is the Dance Point Lounge. Now, look how beautiful it is, okay? Uh, if you're comparing this result to the result of the computer we have created, you see, th oh, it seems to have more definitions, a more definition on this image. It seems nicer. Well, that's because the lighting was even across this castle and it was photographed and because it's bigger, right? The bigger the object, the easier uh, it is to produce something like that. But again, if you zoom in, you see a lot of more points, but still there's no surface. Alright, they're just points floating in the air or spatially organized. And look how fun the pictures are taken from the front of the castle. So it assumes that the back is quite just the same as the front with no difference. Alright, so what you can do now is to ask for the computer to complete these gaps that you are here by creating a surface over here. Again, more options. How do you want this surface? Um, all these options will create connections between these dots, will match colors of the dots to the surface, will create textures. OK. So let's hit OK and run the calculations all over again. All right? So again, your computer is creating this information. It will require some time. So let's skip this time for you. So finally, we are done with this model. Now you can see that it filled out the gaps. You can zoom me in and see there's no more gap up to the point you go across the castle, okay? You can take a look around, you can see the details over there, more geometric features. Uh, you can see that the ground is not that detailed, okay? It had some issues. There is this space around the castle over here that it understands to that it must be filled out again so I'm just clicking with two fingers and dragging so you can see and the depth of this points that's basically the color of the sky it's confusing so it creates this now, if you take a look from the back of the castle, it's understand that it was not photographed. So it's really dark here. Okay, there's no color information for this side. But again, you can just see that it basically mimics the front side. Uh, and you can change some visualization by exploring this menu here. So what you're seeing is the fill can see the lines, all right? So, remember the point clouds we had? Now that those point clouds were filled out with lines connecting all of these points. And depending on the direction of the lines, it's going to use to create the surface, to create the field. You can see the points again. So you can try to see the points and the lines connecting them. And try to do it here, and you see maybe more clear. So the points are the intersections 
of these lines. And these lines are created in a way to make triangles. Okay? Every line is making triangle. Basically, that's it what 3D is. Triangles connect each other. Each triangle set in a, in a different way to create this impression of texture and surface. Right? You can go back to the view, zoom out a little bit. You can change this lighting, and this looks even nicer, doesn't it? Okay. You can see more clear the ground now. The stairs. It's really, really nice. It's showing texture. By clicking here, it doesn't change much. Okay, but clicking here, yes, it does. So that's it, guys. Now we have these two options of builds. And if you want to take your time in another opportunity, maybe in your free time, and go back to regard 3D's website. So let's go there first to finish this class. Documentation. Sorry. Click the documentation tutorial. Here you can find more information about those dialog boxes that opened. We asking you to specify some of these options. So you can have more details over here. Here on find data test you can have two more sets of pictures first try to reconstruct on your own and you are encouraged to take more pictures of different objects for you to try to create this all right uh, please guys let's have a talk about what you felt with this tutorial with this video tutorial during our class let's see what do you think if we keep doing this for next classes See you.